So welcome to an interesting knee case. And this patient had a knee distortion a week ago and has lateral sided pain. And they wanted to know, is there any lateral collateral ligament injury? And while skimming through, we can see we are dealing with a typical case, for the most part, ACL torn, typical bone bruise or infraction fracture, impression fracture here. So that's kind of like the scenario we're going through. So let's go through the case in a systematic approach. So we can, oh, by the way, if you want to learn how to have this systematic approach, this is either something you can learn in the virtual MSK fellowship, but I also describe this nicely in my book uh, that you can purchase on Amazon or in my own shop here. Anyways, um, I might even actually just <laughs> add it here somewhere in the course. Anyway, so you can see here, this is the uh, medial meniscus. Uh, when we scroll through, we can see there are some very mild signal changes in the posterior medial edge. So we want to check this on a, a sagittal view. And here, a bit too much signal for this young person. Uh, you know, you can argue some of these bits, they're going to the undersurface. There might even be a tiny uh, step off here. So it's either a contusion or like a very tiny tear at the undersurface here, in, not complete through. We have a little bit more edema at this posterior medial meniscal capsular um, junction. I don't see a separation per se or an avulsion of meniscus fragments. I think this is still the fault of the joint capsule. So I would not call a ramp tear, but there was uh, likely just a sprain. No meniscal, you know, cartilage defects, you know, stuff like that. It's just below resolution. Tiny edema there, though. Uh, we can see here it's just at this edge. So it's, I would not rate this at this point. Um, yeah, so that's for that. No bone marrow edema. The superficial MTL is fine, and then when we go back to the meniscal femoral component of the deep, we can see there is a high signal here, and you know it's either high grade partial tear or a severe sprain of this single component here, a bit pe peculiar, but together with the posterior medial joint capsule, which has a sprain to here, you know it's the question is is this just deep MTL or is it also the transition where we have then the posterior oblique ligament? So when we go to the origin, this is origin of MCL, and then the second uh, thing here, that's the origin of the posterior oblique ligament. So I think this is just a uh, tick too far distally. So I rated it as not POL, but actually deep MCL. Anyways, that's not a big uh, yeah, distinction here. So then some Baker cyst here and then the other stuff not relevant. Then we go to the lateral side. I think this is where it's more interesting. You can see there's, there's a lot of fluid here. It's a bit busy, uh, but let's start with the cartilage. We don't see any cartilage defects or, or we deem on the femoral side of things. We already know from going through that there is a impaction fracture with a tiny step of cortical indentation. So this fragment has been impressed into this. We should normally have a nice edge. And this is an impression fracture of this posterior lateral edge from the, pivot, from the pivot shift injury, although we don't see a corresponding bone bruise here. Maybe there's a feigned edema, this one here. But you know, you can, well, at some point, I'm not calling stuff anymore. So you can see there's likely a, a tiny bone contusion here. And then, that's that. So meniscus wise, we are okay. We have a tear of the posterior inferior meniscal popliteal fascicle. It has a wave appearance. The super posterior fascicle is fine at the anterior inferior one here is likely also okay. So this one was just crashed. Uh, as you can see, it's just laying over this one here. Popliteus tendon itself, I thought was fine. Um, you can see it on a coronal nicely. And then let's go to the collateral ligament. So we have the fibular collateral ligament or the lateral collateral ligament uh, distally is fine. Sometimes it's best to look on an axle because we have partial volumes here, but at least there is no full thickness tear. There's no high grade partial tear. If anything, it's something mild. And when we start distally, we can go up, 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 up. Just looking at the nerve here. That's a but I think that's still normal. So we go up, 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 still normal. Now stuff like that, I didn't rate. You know, if you want to give a mild sprain, I wouldn't be opposed. Could be just, you know, fluid from somewhere else, but you know, I did not rate this to ligaments, otherwise it was fine. Then it comes up. And then this portion here, the, the anterior edge, I think is fine. Then we have some changes at this posterior level or the insertion of the joint capsule into the ligament insertion. So there is maybe a mild sprain here, something we can describe. And that's what I also described. And then the other bit, when we go uh, here is the anterolateral ligament. So the anterolateral ligament basically um, tractus iliotibial band and or iliotibial band behind it, 
you know, from the meniscus, this bit, that's the meniscal tibial component of the anterolateral ligament. This one is fine. Going up, it becomes a bit messy and busy, and there's this funny fluid collection, and then here it becomes higher sigma. So I call the partial tear of the anterolateral ligament at its meniscofemoral origin. Uh, actually, it's harder to see, so we have to find the MCL, uh, the lateral collateral ligament insertion. It's the same origin as the ALL, more or less, and then this, but it goes anterior to roughly this area. So from here, so that bit would also be ALL, so I call the partial tear here because it's a bit too busy. And then what we can see, there's kind of like trapped fluid between popliteus tendon and the lateral collateral ligament, which is the bursa, the subtendinous bursa of the lateral collateral ligament, sometimes it's called. Um, there's also, or would be a second bursa between LCL and popliteus tendon. But here in this case, I think this is uh, the lateral collateral ligament bursa here. You, know, you can see it's completely surrounded. There's always some some membrane keeping this fluid here loculated in place. And that's also why we have this funny appearance here on this coronal view. So it's not a, a, a recess of the joint. It's not part of the meniscus uh, of the popliteus tendon sheath. You can see this is the bursa here uh, below the lateral collateral ligament. Now, maybe there was just hemorrhage into the bursa. I think that's probably the, the most likely uh, diagnosis um, due to the tears or the, not of the sprains and, and injuries to the ALL origin and partly also at this higher origin of the joint capsule into the LCL origin somewhere here and then a little bit of hematoma in, in this bursa. Okay, I think that was interesting. Now moving on to the cruciate ligament, completely torn mid to proximal portion, even partially likely a walls here. Uh, so proximal half is primarily injured and the distal stump kind of like laying flat here in the joint. Then this large cleft here uh, in the Hofavet path, then that's probably all uh, a PCL fine, the signal changes doesn't matter. And then we go to the patellofemoral joint, there's a fissure in the cartilage here, black line sign, no bone edema, deep focal defect on the needle facet of the patella, no bone edema, large joint effusion, and the extensor tendons were fine, as you can see here, a bit too much fluid in the infrapatellar or in the deep intrapatellar bursa, but that's maybe, yeah, that's just the way it is. So yeah, that was an interesting case. I hope you liked this and let's see you next time. Bye-bye.